<laughs> I'm just going to do a little introduction first. So, hi, I'm Sophie Haver Brock, and this is Colin on Film. So, um, I'm actually Mr. Colin, one of Mr. Colin's film students, and I'm going to be the host for tonight. So, so thank you for joining me. <laughs> hi, Sophia. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so, can you start by introducing yourself and just telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, so I'm Mika Borum. Uh, I'm an actress and I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I've been acting for a very long time. I started when I was about seven. So <laughs> uh, there's been quite quite some time and I've done a, uh, you know, a lot of different films and television. And then more recently, uh, I started making my own projects, uh, some of them which I still act in. Uh, but other ones where I'm more focused on directing and I produce some different things as well. Uh, so my career has kind of spanned everything, but it's all it's all the movies, which I love. So. So what was it like being a child actress? Um, you know, child, it's, it was cool. It was cool. You know, I think. Um, I think it's really great. And I've been super blessed with having a lot of wonderful experiences with traveling and meeting interesting people and um, being exposed to so many different um, things and, and uh, you know, uh, and different like work situations and like learning from a very young age, you know, really cool life skills that you carry with you for the rest of your life. Like, um, you know, just work ethics, you know, like being seven, like being like, all right, I've got to have these lines memorized. Like <laughs> I got to show up on time because there's a hundred people on set waiting. Um, you know, and when you, when you're a child actor, like that stuff is sort of, um, you know, really drilled into your head. I think probably even more so um, than kids in general, because it is a job and you are showing up and like those certain things have to be checked off the list um, in order for like the whole production to go. <laughs> so, um, but it's cool. You know, I feel really grateful for, um, the different experiences that I've had. Um, you know, there's sort of like the trade-off because the, you know, when you, when you work as a child actor, um, you're not, you know, in school with a lot of peers that are your age, you're definitely like hanging out with a lot of older people, um, so that has like a give and take on it, but you know, it'd be beneficial because you get to learn a lot and ask a lot of questions and hopefully not drive all of the adults too crazy with little kids. And they're like, what's that? How do you do that? Why? Why? <laughs> so how did you get interested in acting and film? Um, well, I've always, I've always liked, I've always liked movies. I started doing theater when I was really young. Um, which I think it was just sort of like an extracurricular activity that my parents put me into. And I don't think that they necessarily expected me to sort of like gravitate towards it as much as I did. Um, but uh, yeah, so I started doing a lot of theater. And then I also had a great uncle who loved film. He was, he was all about film and uh, he used to do vaudeville plays and um, He's based out of Pennsylvania. And so he used to like watch all the old films and he followed like, like Clark Gable was his favorite. And then there was this woman, Janet Blair, who was from Blair County and she's this old actress. And so her whole career, he like tracked it and he had this huge book um, because she was from the area where he was from. And so she like, anytime that she was in the papers or had a movie come out, he would cut out the little clippings and he would glue them into a book and he saved them for years. And finally, uh, she was in town and he knew where the house was. And I guess he like went up and knocked on the door and like it was such a dream come true to him. And he handed her this book of like the clippings of all of her work that he'd been keeping track of for the years. So it was very much like a part of my family history, um, knowing that my, my, my great uncle Jim had this like huge, huge passion for film. And then he sort of passed that on to my mom because they spent a lot of time together and then doing the community theater. And then from the community theater, somehow it just sort of evolved into like commercials and um, commercials and that sort of stuff. And then that sort of segued over also in Tucson, uh, which is where I'm originally from in Tucson and Arizona, they have a really 
cool theme park there that's um, old Tucson Studios. And so it's where they used to make all of the Western films. And when you go there, they actually do reenactments of um, like shootouts and like <laughs> they have the people up on the buildings. And so I grew up seeing that too. And then like watching the old Western films that they had filmed there and like recognizing some of the buildings and be like, oh my gosh. And like, so that always felt like I was sort of on set too. And um, so I, I loved that. That kind of got me into it as well as sort of like, you know, was it ignition on getting into film, but. That's so cool. Yeah. I, actually, I actually, now I'm interested in film, but I started doing theater and community theater as well. So oh, cool. transitioning to do more film. So that's really cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Are you focused just on acting or on um, other areas of filmmaking or? Um, well, yeah, I really have been getting interested in like directing and stuff, but cool. I started like really young being on stage. Like I, I still love doing, I still do community theater and stuff, but I'm sort of more into the behind the scenes aspect of it now. So. Yeah, I love directing. I think directing is um, really like such an interesting job. It's so cool. For me, one of the things that I really enjoy with it is the collaboration of artists. Like, like I just love um, having a script and having my ideas with it and then sitting down with all of these different artists and seeing what they're bringing to the table, mm -hmm. you know, and just hearing their perspectives on it. Like for me, that's the most exciting thing. And that's, that's mm -hmm. really, um, that's really what I love about directing the most is just working with other artists and like kind of trying to streamline every vision into one. Cause I even like it too. When you talk to people and they have like some outlandish idea, I'm like, that's crazy. It's really entertaining, but, but it doesn't fit with what we're doing. But I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool when everything comes together. I love that part of it. Yeah. So what was your first job that you had as an actor? Um, so the first big film that I did was this movie called Education of Little Tree. And that was really fun. It was really, really fun. We filmed in Canada and it was in the fall. So all of the leaves were, um, it was in Montreal, all the leaves were orange and red and yellow. And they had reconstructed this, uh, this hilltop into an old town from the 1920s. So they had like tobacco drying and they had like an old candy shop and uh and my character in that was supposed to be uh really poor and she befriends this indian boy and so there's this um weird dichotomy between the families because they don't really like the fact that we're friends and so um they had me barefoot and i was in like a like just like a toe sack dress and walking through the mud and it was awesome it was such a cool experience it was really really cool and i love too that um i was just like immersed in history like you know it just surrounded me with all the sets and everything that they did and so that was my my first film and that was produced by robert redford so once i did that film it really got the ball rolling for other projects too, because it was, um, because it, you know, it was sort of like a, uh, a high level um, film because Robert Redford was involved with producing on that. But yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. So what's, what would you consider your most memorable, memorable like moment in your overall career doing film? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I've had a lot of really cool experiences. I've been super fortunate and um, I feel really grateful for the experiences that I've had. Um, so it's hard to like pin it down to just one, but um, hopefully the most memorable is like the next big awesome project that I do. <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that that's the most memorable. But um, yeah, I've been lucky to work on some cool stuff though and to meet interesting people and, and those collaborations, you know? And, and that's one thing that's been really cool too is the fact that um, I have acted since I was young, putting stuff together as a director. Um, I've been able to call up friends and people that I've worked with and um, people have been really supportive. And I've been so blessed that people have been supportive and like stand together 
to, um, you know, come and, and be a part of these different ventures that I want to do. And like, so when I started writing and directing, that's who I reached out first were, were prior colleagues that I had worked with um, and started, you know, developing projects around those people and like writing characters that would be interesting for, you know, actors that I was good friends with. Can you talk about some of those projects? Um, so I, I directed this movie, Hollywood.com. It hasn't come out yet. And that was super fun. That's, um, it's an adventure comedy. Um, and it's about two production companies that are in a race to make the next big mind film. So they send a producer down to Guatemala, but the producer ends up kidnapped and then craziness ensues. And it's sort of like a Romancing the Stone. Did you ever see Romancing the Stone? No, I haven't. No. There was a, you're too young to, if someone's given me a modern reference for this and I can't remember what it is, like a real modern reference because Romance in the Stone, I think is, uh, I don't know what year that came out, but um, but anyway, so for that, that film, um, that film's really fun. It took a while. That was like my first full feature that I've directed. And so I wrote it, I directed it, I acted in it, I produced it. Oh, Romancing the Stone is amazing. Michael Douglas. You know what I This is perfect. We're going to get a little cheat, cheat sheet up here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that movie, um, what did you ask me? <laughs> I just yeah, asked you to talk about some of your projects. I'm sorry, come again? About some of your projects that you worked on. Oh, okay. Um, for directing? Yeah, either one, like when for co collaborations and stuff. Like you were talking um, about. Yeah, so that was fun. So so for that, so that actually, so I knew that I wanted to direct a full feature. And so I was trying to figure out what, what it would be because I'd already directed some short films and I directed some experimental films and I directed music videos. So, so I was like, okay, like I really, like I want to do, I want to do a full feature. And so I started figuring out and I wrote the script around um, available resources, which I think is a really interesting slash good note because I have a lot of friends um, that write these phenomenal scripts, but uh, you know, a lot of times like if, if you're doing something and it, ha and it has to be done on a really big budget, it might take you forever to raise the financing for that, you know? So for me, I was like, okay, what, you know, locations do I have available? What actors do I have available? What can I do where I can get this done in a decent amount of time? Because since I'm also going to be wearing all these different hats, I know it's going to take forever anyway, <laughs> which it did take forever. I've been like working on it for like over three years, but it's complete now, which is fantastic and a really good feeling. But um, so for that film, um, I based it off of, there was a trip that I went on with my dad. We went down to Guatemala and he was buying some jade down there because he's a gemologist. So that was the inspiration for that. And so I got the idea off of that. And then, um, so I started writing around that, knew I wanted to use that. And then for me, for directing and for, for film stuff in general, um, character development and the actors are super important to me because I've been mm -hmm. acting forever. So as a director, I was like, that's, you know, story and then the actors. Um, so I started figuring out what would be really cool, interesting characters that actors would want to play, you know, that have strong arcs, they're well developed. Um, and so I reached out to a couple of my friends and I got some really awesome actors on board for the film. And one of the ways uh, that I got them to come on board, apart from them being really awesome and supportive, was I had discussions with them about what roles are they typecast into? You know, because these are like working actors who work a lot, but a lot of them end up being typecast. So like one of my friends, he always plays like mafia characters. And he's like, I just want to like, no one, no one lets me have just fun. Like, I just want to dance, I want to sing. And I was like, perfect. You're Marvin Lovejoy. <laughs> you're going to dance and you're going to sing and you're a secretary and you are a like super social media networker. Like you're, that's you. And he's like, yes, I love it. I love it. So um, I did that across the board with all the characters. And, and I think it really got, um, you know, actors excited and, and got them involved with it. Uh, and for the movie too, I, I got really lucky. Um, I reached out to Tom Arnold, who he had played my dad on a TV show for a couple of years when I was nine. And I've stayed in touch with him since uh, then. But I told him, I was like, I'm directing this thing. Like, you know, 
will you come on board? And he's so nice. He's so cool. He's so generous. He's like, yeah, absolutely. And this was on like a Tuesday. And he's like, all right, I'm available on Friday or like Saturday. And I was like, what? Like, no. Like, I was like, we need to get the locations ready. Uh, we have to finish like painting the sets. Let me, now that like, I know you're totally interested, like, let me rewrite the dialogue to make sure it's perfect. Like, oh my gosh, like, what an honor to direct you. Like, I can make this perfect. Like, no, definitely not Saturday. Like, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I got really lucky. So he's on board. His his character in this is hilarious, too. He plays this character, LJ, and he's like a mafiosa um, cartel leader down in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool i can't wait to see that it sounds really awesome yeah it's a it's a fun one it's a fun movie so what's your favorite type of film to create um i don't have a specific type of film i think that um i think that uh i don't know there's so much stuff that i'm interested in so there isn't a favorite one because I'd like to try and do everything. <laughs> I, I know you're happy a lot about like one. historical pieces though. So yeah, <laughs> moving into historical pieces would be a blast. Is definitely definitely the budgets on those have to be a lot more because you have to, yeah. you know, um, like with the cars and the clothes and all that stuff. But I would love to do that in the future. There's a project that I've been developing, um, and we'll get that one going. A lot of things have sort of gotten you know, put on the back burner at the moment with the pandemic. But um, yeah, there's a project that I really like that's a coming of age story. Um, it's a script that I've developed and it's a coming of age story about a guy in the in the 19, or a boy in the 1920s who is from California and he travels to the South and there's all these like beautiful vignettes where he sort of um, becomes a man through the process of like his interaction and grows with meeting different people. So that's a historical one. Uh, project that I'm going to move into eventually, but I think mainly with films, like I want, I want to, you know, push stuff that has some sort of positivity to it, or some sort of um, makes people think, or has some sort of reflective, you know, re reflective response to it. Um, I think that um, you know, like majorly violent stuff and gory stuff is not necessarily. Um, the genre that I instinctually feel drawn to. But that being said, like I could see myself doing an interesting horror film and directing something like that as well. It just would have to be the right one. You know, it just depends uh, on the story. But generally speaking, like I want to, you know, I want to make a difference in the world and put out positivity and, you know, make people happy and, you know, do what I do what I can to contribute to. <laughs> So what was it like working um, on The Patriot and being um, Mel Gibson's daughter? That was fun. That was a really cool experience. Um, it was very special. We, we, we filmed um, in North Carolina and South Carolina and um, we had Heath Ledger on that project. So that was cool. And, uh, and a wonderful little actress, um, Sky McCool Bartusiak, who played my sister on that too. She was out of this world. And, um, and Mel Gibson, Jason Isaacs. I mean, that cast is just yeah. out of the world. A lot of really, really, really phenomenal actors on that. And to be a part of a production that's so big, like there were, there were like that that cast and crew was huge. And then in addition to that, um, they uh, they tried to be as historically accurate as possible with the locations and the wardrobe. Um, just everything across the board. So, I mean, like what a crazy experience, you know? <laughs> it was like a really, really just immersive, uh, like crazy experience, something really special to be a part of. Uh, and also just, you know, cool, because it's about like the Revolutionary War and, you know, being American mm -hmm. and then being in that movie and, you know, so it was, it was very special. Um, Do you like, do you have any specific stories that you have, like working on set? Mm, I don't know. Specific stories. I've got some stories. Oh, what's this? Oh. <laughs> hey, I see, I see me. <laughs> Is that, <laughs> does everyone see that? Oh, there yeah. we go. Uh, specific stories. I've had some cool experiences. I'm trying to think. Um, 
<laughs> one of the ones that kind of stands out to me. Oh yeah, there I am. It's cute. <laughs> no. Um, one of the ones that stands out to me was uh, when I worked on um, Mighty Joe Young, which, uh, which that was a fun movie. It had like uh, Charlize Theron and Bill Paxton on it. And I played, um, I played uh, young Charlize Theron in the beginning of that. And so uh, at the beginning of the film, my character is uh, out in the jungle and she befriends um, oh yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, friends, little Joe. And so little Joe inside of the gorilla suit was actually Vern Troyer, which Vern Troyer is Austin Powers from Mini-Me. Um, and he's since passed away. Uh, very unfortunate, he's a great guy. Um, but it was just like an interesting experience. So he was in the gorilla suit and we filmed in Hawaii, and um, it was so funny because Vern, they would throw him on the shoulders and you had to walk up a rope and they would throw me on people's shoulders too because I was also little and so you, you had to climb up a rope to get to the set up top and, uh, and Vern was just like smoking cigars the whole time, <laughs> and, like cussing and like, <laughs> he was a trip. And then also in that film, so that was the part in Hawaii. And then we did some stuff in LA too. When we were back in LA, um, I remember I was so excited to meet Bill Paxton. I've always, I've always loved Bill Paxton. And um, so when I first met him, we had uh, lunch on set and they had like a big barbecue thing. And I was little, you know? And so I had like barbecue sauce just all over me. Cause I was like, oh, I love barbecue. And so I came over to meet him and I was like, hi, <laughs> I was like, hi. <laughs> and I threw out my hand and he was like, is that barbecue? And I was like, yeah. And he's so funny. He like grabbed my finger and he like licked it. He goes, hmm, that tastes delicious. <laughs> I don't know. It was just so cute, just warm and endearing. Um, so those are kind of cool. And uh, what else? Um, when I worked with Drew Barrymore, I played little Drew Barrymore in um, this movie called Riding Cars with Boys. Which actually, um, that movie had two of the kid actors in it um, that were also in The Patriot, that had played my brother and sister in The Patriot, had Logan Lerman and uh, Sky McCall Bartusiak. They were both in Riding Cars with Boys as well. But um, so that one, I was playing Little Drew. And so when I first met her, when I came to set, she was so funny. She like ran up to me and, uh, she was like, hi, you're playing little me. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And I was so starstruck. I was like, I love her. <laughs> and she was like, let's go on a walk. I want to hear all about you. And she was so sweet. She like put her arm in mine and we like um, went on this little walk around the block. And she was like, how's life? How's school? Do you like acting? Um, so that was pretty cute too. That was a fun experience. Um, a lot of good memories. Penny Marshall directed that one too. She was a riot. She was really cool. So did you already know how to surf when you did Blue Crush or did you have to learn? No, I didn't know how to surf. I didn't know how to surf at all. Actually, so they, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened with it, but I ended up, I had met with them. I did like a general meeting and then they um, flew me to Hawaii I, <laughs> I like all these photos coming up. So they flew me to Hawaii, and then in Hawaii, then I did a reading with um, Kate Bosworth, and she and I did the fight scene that was in the movie. We did this improv fight scene because there's a big fight scene in the movie where um, uh, I'm like messing up in school and like doing all this stuff, and she wants me to come home, and, and I'm not there, and, and so she comes to this party and finds me. So we improv this fight scene. And uh, so I was there and I had done that. And then they were like, well, we want to see you on a surfboard too. And they're like, how comfortable are you in the water? And I was like, I'm super in the water. <laughs> and so they threw me out on a surfboard and uh, it went okay. It went okay, but uh, I was not that great at first. I was like trying to paddle them. and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like one of the big long foam boards. It was like a smaller one. So, you know, every time you paddle, <laughs> the right side dips all the way in. And then every time you paddle left, the left side dips all the way in. And so I was like, oh man, but I really wanted to do the movie. Like I was so excited to do the movie. I was like, oh, I don't know how to look more graceful. Like what do I do? Um, so 
yeah, the but I so I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, long long story short, I didn't know how to surf uh, on that. But I now surf, and I know how to surf, and um, I feel really lucky that I was involved with that movie because it was you know like girl surfing movie, and it was the first one um, to come out like that. And they actually, um, while I was doing the film, they had me um, work with some different surfers so that I could become com comfortable in the water and for some of the different scenes. And um, the one of the main people that they ended up having me work with um, for surfing is this guy, Noah Johnson, who is like this amazing, like huge wave surfer. Like he won like the Eddie IQ, which is like one of the biggest big wave surfing competitions in the world. So I was just like, wow. But they had, a, they had amazing, that film was cool. They had so many amazing surfers on set. Like they all banded together and were a part of that film. So I, yeah, I surf, I still surf. I, I like, I love it. I have such a passion for it. I'm not good at all though. <laughs> not, and like sometimes I'm out there and I'm like, oh, is it a shark? No, it's not a shark. It's okay. It's like, okay. Are there any cool. other like special talents that you gained from working on films? Um, I can't think of any particular off the top of my head, but I will say like, I think that's one of the coolest things about movies mm -hmm. is like, you get to dive in and research and become an expert on like the most random weird subjects or like maybe things that you would never have explored before and and you just get really far into it you know and you you, you go down the rabbit hole and I, and I just love that um it's like a hyper focus into uh something that had never even occurred to you before and i think that that's really positive too. Um, you know, for me as a person, I like it because I feel like I'm, I'm opening myself up to experiences and to um, maybe the way that other people think or other ideas. Um, so I love, I love that about being involved with films. I'm trying to think, I feel like there's got to be something, another cool thing that I learned, but I don't know. Do you have any other special talents that you'd like to share? Special talents, no. <laughs> Not that I can think of. <laughs> no one knows about you. Or like, um, <laughs> ooh, I can't. I can't tell you because no one knows it about me. True. Yeah, <laughs> I've got. To, I've got to keep all those special talents a secret. Um, I just got a guitar though. I'm planning on learning the guitar. So, so far I know the. Uh, I know A, C, D, E, and G. It's. <laughs> Now you can it's play a lot of songs from that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I tried to I tried to play the other day as a song, and it really didn't sound like anything. But but mm -hmm. there's it'll come come along. So hopefully that'll be my my hidden talent coming up soon. Do you have a hidden talent? <laughs> What's your hidden talent? Tell me yours. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know what's considered a hidden talent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to be able to like make like balloon animals like with like you know the balloons like the clown yeah. i used to be able to do that but i don't really remember i could make that's like awesome. a dog that's like it but <laughs> i don't that's even know how i came up with like <laughs> <laughs> do you know who taught you that no i i think i i think i actually did a show i did community theater show and i was actually in susical do you know what that show is it's like I don't. it's like dr seuss and it's oh, like all no, the dr. Seuss characters. and there was like there's like a circus scene and i really wanted to like do something cool so i wanted to be like a clown and like make a balloon animal so i think that's i think that's where i got it but i don't See, know I love that I, and that comes you know it comes from being involved i'm like yeah. you know acting otherwise would you have learned that maybe yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. so mr colin actually uh, wanted me to ask this one but he's a fan of dawson's creek so what was it like to work on that set that was cool I, I had been a big fan of Dawson's Creek before I got on there. So I was like a little bit like, I was a little like, wow. <laughs> a little starstruck the whole time I was there. Um, Cause I, I, I loved that show, you know? Uh, and I still love that show. Um, I had a blast on there. Most of my scenes were all with Katie Holmes. Um, and so that was, that was great. She was really, really nice and warm with me. And um, then also I had scenes with um, uh, Taylor Hanley, who is another actor um, that I've known for so, quite some time. He's a great actor too. He was in uh, Jack Frost with me when I was younger, like maybe like seven years prior to that. 
And it was funny. And then they cast him as my boyfriend. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is strange. You're friends with my brother. <laughs> so that was funny. But, um, you know, it was fun coming on Dawson's Creek, too, at that time, because uh, they had already been on air for a while. Like, I think I was in the last season. I think it was the last season. And so they were a really well-oiled machine. Like, they were just you know, everything was, was, was well put together. And, um, they also had, uh, Oliver Hudson was on there too. He was playing uh, Katie Holmes boyfriend for that section. So I remember I was like, Oh, these people are so cool. <laughs> I remember like watching Katie Holmes, like on set in between scenes, sometimes she'd read books and I was like, what is she reading? I need to read. That. Like, I was just so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> we're going a little bit over um 30 minutes but do you have some more time i only have a few more questions left yeah absolutely i'm here okay. perfect I'm um, do you have any other interests like outside of film like passions or stuff like that um well i mean i love i love doing um i like surfing and then i love like anything um uh, you know having to do with animals like I love supporting stuff with animals, um, you know, and doing different stuff for charities. And uh, I've spoken to a lot of schools, actually, which is which has been really fun. Like um, I did like a little tour of speaking at schools um, uh, in Arkansas, and then I've done it in California. And then um, I spoke at the school in uh, Virgin Islands. I spoke at some schools down there um, in January. In January, so that's something that I enjoy doing too. Um, but mostly making movies. <laughs> it takes up a lot of my time. I like working out too. I'm into working out um, and doing like running. I like to run, but I really enjoy. I really enjoy film. I, I enjoy like reading about film, watching films, trying to write films. <laughs> Pretty much the immersive going to theater. I like I love going to theater. Um, I like reading like a little bit of, um, you know, books on psychology or, or that kind of stuff. Cause I feel like that also sort of plays into different ways that you can approach characters in film. It's great to have like a profession that you love. So it's like, you got to do what you love every day. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's nice to be, it's nice to be passionate about what I do for work for sure. I really, I really feel lucky and blessed that like, I have that in my life for sure. So I know you're talking about a lot of traveling, like you've been all over the place. What's like the coolest place that you've been to for like working in, in film and stuff? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I filmed a movie in China and that was really cool. It was like the first American and uh, Chinese conjoint um, production. And it's this movie called Smile. And the movie is based around this one woman's experience that she had when she volunteered for the charity Operation Smile. Operation Smile is like a super cool charity. They go to um, different countries and they perform um, surgeries on kids with cleft palates. And they also like, they, they do general teaching about, you know, like dysentery and that kind of stuff. But, um, but they have sometimes have volunteers that go with the doctors and sometimes they have high school students and college students um, that they allowed to go and support and assist. And so this movie that I did over there was about this, this, this girl's experience, um, coming from Malibu and then traveling into China and about just how getting involved with the charity, um, changed her life and like changed her as a person. So when we were filming in China, um, it was so foreign. It was, it was, it was probably one of the most foreign, um, traveling experiences that I had ever had before in my life. And so I found that to be really interesting and, and really humbling and um, and just cool. And that that I did when I was like 17 or 18. So um, but yeah, and everyone over there was really nice. It was it was a smooth production. Most of our production was all, um, most of the crew was all Chinese and we had a translator. <laughs> so it was so different. Like I'd already worked on a lot of films and it was just like so different, like not being able to communicate directly, but also trying to to just listen, um, you know, to listen and, and figure out how to be direct with a minimal amount of words. 
which is also like a, you know, sort of a beautiful experience in itself is. Oh, wait, what did Mr. Colin just say? He said, uh, well, <laughs> I thought he said something, okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Oh. oh, wow, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to read over there too. I'm like, my eyes, I gotta lean in. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big part of raising money for the organization. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you know, but we have an arts academy at my high school. I'm actually, I'm in the digital media track of it. So, what advice would you give to like high school students that are interested in this field? Um, let's see. So I think that, um, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> I think that if you work on just, you know, doing a little bit of progress every day, just, you know, small tangible things that you can do and just think about your goal and where you want to go and just move towards it a little bit each day. Like you don't have to do you know, these huge monstrous moves, but just move, make one little step each day. And then I think in addition to that, like really developing the skills that make you someone that people want to work with, you know, so showing up on time, being prepared, um, all those sort of skills that make it so that um, if the opportunity arises, you're ready to go and, um, and you're somebody that people want to give opportunities to because you can tell that you know that you'll do the work and then and, the, and that you're ready for it so i think just you know being prepared being prepared for life <laughs> <laughs> is there something that you like before starting in this career what is something that you wish you knew before coming into it oh something i wish i knew before um i don't know Ooh, something that I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I wish I knew what I wish I knew. Something that I knew, wish I knew before I went into this career field. Uh, I don't know. You stumped me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any like hardships that? This, yeah. Did Did you have any hardships like working in film? Um, I mean, nothing in particularly like really comes up with it. I mean, I think that, um, you know, film in itself, like you're working like really long hours uh, mm -hmm. and you're traveling a lot. So you're away from family and friends and you're like doing long hours. So you're not living like a traditional lifestyle by any means. Um, but, you know, that's sort of the trade off for getting to band together with other artists who are doing the same thing and like making really awesome pieces of artwork that live forever, you know? So I think, I think it's a pretty cool, fair trade off. I, um, but it definitely, I mean, that's, that's something that I would say is, is a trade off with it. You know, you don't have like the, the traditional nine to five, you know, job. And when you start on a film too, like if you, if you begin filming something, you know, the, the train has left the station like you have to finish you know you have to keep working on it till it's complete and that's how people end up doing these like 12 hour days 15 hour days 16 hour work days because maybe you only have the location for two days or maybe you only have that actor for this one week and and so um i mean the cool thing is there's like generally there's like a camaraderie between people where they're like we love this movie, like we want it to get done. And so people will band together and, and they'll do those long hours and they'll, they'll make the sacrifices for it. But there's there's 100% a lot of sacrifice in working in the film industry. So you gotta, you gotta love it. If you don't love it, then, you know, maybe maybe something else is, is a better choice for that. What are some skills that you've acquired from doing like filmmaking, like time management or like things like that, communication? Um, let's see, making films, I think communication is really important, you know, because um, you need to be able to uh, empathize and communicate with a lot of different people on set. So you've got to, you know, be able to communicate with the actors um, and, uh, 
and then with the crew members and just make sure that everyone's up to speed and on the same page. Um, also being able to read people, like if you have, you know, a really dramatic scene and you have actors in it that are supposed to be like crying or fighting or something, you know, you need to figure out what that sort of, you know, either in a discussion with communicating with the actor or just intuitively figure out what do they need for support on that? Do they need to have a quiet set? Do they need to be kind of off to the side? Or are they somebody, you know, because everyone's different, or are they somebody who kind of just jumps in and out of, um, out of the scene? And so it can be sort of more of like a lively, vivacious set, you know? So, so trying to manage all the personality yeah. <laughs> and keep everybody happy and keep everything moving. So this is the last thing. Would you like to promote any of your like social media or like promote any of your projects that you? Yeah. Doing? Um. So let's see. Uh. So we've got Hollywood.com. I'm still trying to figure out when that's going to come out exactly because we had it set up for the theatrical distribution through Mexico, and we're figuring out the dates on that. But um, now with the pandemic, we're still we're figuring out exactly. Mm -hmm what we're gonna do with it now, if we're gonna wait and still release it in the theaters or if we're gonna switch over and do streaming. But that's a good one to keep an eye out for. And then we just finished shooting a music video for this really, really awesome, like out of this world, um, up and coming artist. His name's Travis Tidwell. And so that music video will be released. Um, they're gonna release his album and they're gonna release a music video around the same time. And so we just shot that down here. We shot it um, recently, but um, that'll be in the next week or two. And so I guess maybe on like my Facebook page or my Instagram would be a good way to stay up to speed. Um, I need to get better at social media stuff. <laughs> I need some youngins on my social media. Sophia, can you help me? <laughs> yeah, I can. Cool. How, are you? How are you with the social media? I'm pretty good. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty good I'm at it. Recruit you. <laughs> So yeah, that's all the questions that I have. So is there anything else you would like to say before we? Oh, look, I, I see that you you made him a TikTok. Oh yeah, TikTok, do you know what that TikTok is? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we, so we went on a, a field trip to Ming, Ming Chen's um, like his studio and we made like a TikTok with him and like, it was really cool. And, and <laughs> again, Mr. Cullen, we did, one too. It was really. It's like a platform where you could post like fifteen to sixty second videos, and it's like it's really, it's pretty cool. It's like it's trending right now. So awesome! Yeah. Did you guys dance? Did you do one of the dance TikToks? Yeah. So yeah. we did. We did one of the dances. But Mr. Cullen, he, I don't know. He just there was a bunch of things that we did. <laughs> how many did you guys? How many did you guys make? Um. Well, with Ming, we did. I don't think I think we did one, but it was it was like a, a with a few different girls that it was like it was a big group that we did it. So it was like we were all just dancing, doing one of the TikTok dances. But yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> did you guys do the one where it has like the people in front and then like the next person and then like the next one? Do you know that TikTok one? Do you know what I'm talking about? There's the oh, one. Yeah, like, the people. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we didn't do. Oh, I wish we did that. that would be <laughs> cool. um, I forget which one we did. We just like. Oh, it was like one of the dances, like, or it could have been like Renegade or something. Like, do you know what that is? No, <laughs> uh, Renegade. One of the really trending dances, but <laughs> I, need I need see, I need one of those. Yeah, I could be your social media consultant. Perfect. I'm gonna do the Renegade, <laughs> but you gotta teach me the dance move, and we gotta like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me and sharing your story. So thank yeah. you. Thank you so much.